verse number 13, but first let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of prayer, Lord, that we can call upon thee. And Father, we thank you, God, for the great day that you reached down and saved our souls from hell. And I pray right now, God, you'd help us tonight around the word of God. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. And Father, I pray that you bless our fellowship together. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the book of Revelation up to this point, we have, uh, we have covered several things. We've covered, uh, you know, uh, several uh, different aspects of the Great Tribulation. But after, after this trumpet, uh, or after this, yeah, after this seventh trumpet that we're fixing to read about, uh, things start to really pick up, and the, the uh, evil of the world begins to really show itself even more than it has, and the catastrophe upon planet Earth is, is beginning to show here more than it ever has. And it's, it's going to be a, a terrible day, this time of Jacob's trouble, uh, the last three and a half years of the tribulation. And friend, there's, there's one consolation God's people can have uh, is that we're not going to be here. Amen. Uh, we're not going to be here during the tribulation. We're not going to be here the first part or the second part. And so we know that we'll be uh, forever with the Lord in heaven until it comes time after seven years to come back to be with him. But we'll always be in the presence of the Lord after the rapture. So we're looking forward to that. We're talking tonight in class and, and uh, some of the things that, we're, you know, that we are involved in in this world, that our country is involved in, that the state of the affairs of our country, uh, we look and see that it can't be too long till Jesus comes. We believe that, believe that he's coming soon. Is there a way back for America to get back to God? There is, but is America willing to get back to God? And, and so we look at those things, and, and they'll either be a, a, a great tragedy in the United States, or, or I believe Jesus is coming back for his, for his people. And so we don't know what we're going to face, but one thing we know, whatever the, whatever the, the uh, hardest things that we as believers face down here before Jesus comes is not going to be compared to the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, when, when literally the demons of hell are going to be loosed, and uh, the stars of the sky are going to be plunged to earth. And things that seem like they would be in a science fiction movie, only they're not, they're real. And so in verse number 13, I'll read these uh, verses down through verse number 19. And we'll say a few things and make uh, a couple of notes about chapter number 12. And, uh, and then we'll be through. And the same hour was, was there a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell. It, in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Now this is the end uh, here uh, of this portion of Scripture, the parenthetical. And then the next part here begins the seventh trumpet. Uh, we left off with the sixth trumpet. Now the trumpet judgments are continued, and it ends up with the seventh trumpet, which... which uh, you know, which uh, opens up into something else. And the seven angels, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were, there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Now, what's, what's this talking about? What, what's, what's fixing to happen right here? Uh, what's this angel saying that opens the, that blows this seventh trumpet? He is saying that Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, is just about to take everything and make it all right. Amen. He's about to fix everything. And he's going to fix everything. And there's going to be war between, uh, you know, between the nations. There's going to be. But God, when he steps on the scene and when he comes on, and, and that's, what, that's what's being said here, the kingdoms of this world are, are, are become the kingdoms of our Lord. In other words, Everything that's going on in this world, God has control over anyway. And those rulers and these leaders of the world, uh, the world system, it's, it'll be soon, friend, uh, that, that Jesus is going to take over. And all the kingdoms of the world are going to be subject to him. They are now, but they don't know it. So all the kingdoms of the world are going to be subject to him. And, uh, and the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Now God's fixing to make everything right. 
And uh, he's going to reign forever and ever. There, after God makes it all right, friend, there'll never be another time in eternity uh, when things will be as they are today. Amen. There'll be a new heaven. There'll be a new earth. There'll be a new people. There'll be uh, all things, uh, you know, all things are become new. Old things are passed away. And that's what it's going to be through eternity with us. We're living in the last church age. We're living in, in the last hour of the last church age, the uh, church age of uh, Laodicea. And soon Jesus is coming back, and he's going to make it all right. Now, what's wrong today in, in a lot of, uh, you know, in a lot of Christian uh, folks is we don't really believe that. And, uh, and you say, well, you've got to believe that. And you, you believe the word of God, you believe that. But sometimes our actions don't show that we really, that we really do believe that. So we've got to keep in our mind that this is truth and that it is the word of God and that soon Jesus is going to make all things right now. And, and when this seventh angel sounds this trumpet, it makes an impression in heaven. And uh, the, the joy that is celebrated around this trumpet blowing, verse number 16. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God. Why? Because God speaks to make it all right. The day that, that has been longed for when, when God makes it all new and when uh, Jesus rules the earth as King of kings and Lord of lords. Uh, when, that's when that's going to happen, the, it is announced that that's going to happen. And these 24 elders, they, they bow on their face before God and they worship him. And here's what they say, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. In other words, they're saying we, we give you the glory because you have taken to yourself the, the power and you're going to reign. And you're going to reign forever and ever. And friend, that's, the, that's what you and I long for is for the day when Jesus comes and when we sit under his control, uh, you, know, for, for, uh, you know, for seven years we're under his, you know, we're completely uh, his and a thousand years we rule and reign with him. And then for all eternity, uh, we're going to be with him. And that's what we look for. And, and we, should, we should worship God ourselves for the very thought that he's coming back for us. And we should praise him and we should uh, be thankful to him knowing that soon he's coming back to get the bride. And then these things take place after that has happened. And the nations were angry and thy, uh, thy wrath is come and the time of the dead that thou should be judged and thou should... Uh, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Listen, and the temple of God was opened in heaven. Now here we find the temple of God uh, during this, uh, you know, during all this that's going on, the temple of God is opened in heaven, and there was seen in the temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. All these things are going on, and, and then the temple is opened up, and there we see, uh, we see the, the uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant. There it is. Does it still exist? Yes. And, you know, there's been a lifelong search for the Ark of the Covenant, and I'm going to find it on this earth uh, because I believe it. To, how did it get there? You ask God when you get there. But I believe it to be there in heaven, uh, you know, with, with uh, the, the things that are precious to God. Now, we end this chapter and we begin chapter number 12. And this is a, a chapter, or the next few things are, are, is another section of sevens. And uh, we have studied thus far in the book of Revelation that there are, that there are many things that, are, that the Bible sees as seven. I'm trying to get something up here if I can find it. It always wants to be difficult at the wrong time. It don't look like it's going to come. But anyway, I had them all listed as, as the, we know there's seven churches. We know that there are seven trumpets. We know there are seven vials and uh, seven, uh, you know, there, there'll be seven more judgments. And all the, here are the seven personages. So the Bible is complete. The number seven is, is the number of completeness and per perfection. So what God does, we know that he does it right. He does it completely. And here concerns the seven personages of the book of Revelation. Now, I'm not going to try, uh, you know, to get into this too deep tonight, but we will read part of it and see who these personages are. Now, in verse number 1 of chapter number 12, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. 
And I see there appeared a great wonder. That word wonder means sign. There appeared a great sign in heaven, and it's a woman closed with the sun. Now, this is a sign. This is a, a something that, that uh, John is seeing as an appearance. And, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Now, who is this? Who, who is this? Uh, uh, this this woman who is this this woman that is uh, clothed with the sun, and the moon is under her feet, and she has twelve a crown of twelve stars upon her head. Who is this? This is this is a a scene. This is a a, uh, a picture of the nation of Israel, and and that's what that's who this is. That's the one that's travailing uh, to give birth. Now, who comes on the scene also? Now, this sets up what has been going on since the beginning, uh, you know, of time as we know it, as, as far as, as, as way back in time when all this happened. This is setting up a battle between the devil and Christ. And we know who wins the battle. But the devil lost, and it's been a constant battle, 6,000 years. The devil lost in the Garden of Eden. That's when the devil was defeated in the Garden of Eden. Now, he tried, you know, back somewhere in, in time, he tried to exalt himself above God and take God's place, and God, God kicked him out of heaven and all his followers. But now, in, in the book of Genesis, in, in, uh, we learn that, <clears throat> that the devil, uh, you know, came and, 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 uh, the, and, and what was said was that one day you're going to, breathe, you're going to bruise the heel of Christ, but he's going to bruise your head. He's going to crush your head. So the, the, the end result is what we already know. But, but since that time, the devil has fought. He does know his days are numbered. I believe he does know that he don't have forever because the end result is already there. And so the devil has fought ever since trying to eliminate uh, Christianity, trying to eliminate Christians, trying to do away, uh, you know, do away with the people of God. And so here setting up in these two chapters, there is, there is coming a, another scene of battle. Verse number 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon the heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and he cast them uh, to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So here's that great dragon. Who is that? That is Satan. That's who this red dragon is. It's Satan. And he's standing for it, and he's trying his best to destroy uh, the person of Christ. And we know that not to be true. Now what happens? Uh, and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God that they should feed her three, feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So who is this child? It's none other than Christ. And so uh, this is all. This is all in picture. Now here's the archangel, archangel Michael, in verse number. Starting in verse number seven, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused him before our God day and night. And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time." And so the devil knows he's got but a short time. And, and all, the, all the evil and all the chaos that he can produce, he is going to produce. He's doing it now, and he, he will do it to the last day that he is cast in to the lake of fire when, when God uh, sews him up and binds him and casts him in to the lake of fire for all eternity. And uh, verse number 13 and when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman 
which brought forth the man-child, persecuted Israel, which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed and which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. There all war is going to be going on. All, uh, all manner of evil is going to be uh, projected from Satan. And he's going to rage war against Israel. But guess who's going to win? Amen. It's not going to be the devil. Amen. It's not be, going to be that old serpent. It's not going to be that red dragon. But we know that Christ is the ultimate victor because uh, he is all powerful. The devil can't. The devil can't be everywhere at all, at all times like God can. He can only imitate certain things. The devil does not know everything like God knows. He only pretends that. And he is not all powerful like God is. God is all powerful. And God will soon defeat the devil and put him in his place where he will torment you and I no more forever. What a day that's going to be. We're going to stop there because it continues on with the beast out of the sea and some things that we need to stop and step and take back a little time and do, a, do some explaining about. So we'll take up here the next time uh, on these seven per, uh, uh, personages, and we'll uh, continue with this woman, Israel, and we'll see how all that reflects. Now we go back to uh, the book of Daniel, and, uh, and, and there's some things in the book of Daniel that will put, shed some light on these verses. All right? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God tonight. Bless it, I pray. Help us, Father, as we go our way. God, help us to continually read the word of God and study the word of God that we might, uh, Lord dear Jesus, draw close to thee and have thy precepts, Lord, in our heart. We'll thank you for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.